Hey guys, welcome to today's meal prep video. On the menu today we have Mary Me Chicken with Brussels sprouts and roasted sweet potatoes. And then we are also just going to do some spaghetti, which I will be having zoodles for my spaghetti and my husband is going to have regular thin spaghetti noodles with his. But we'll make the sauces separately as well. He'll have ground beef in his and then I'm going to have ground turkey in mine. So, I'm going to get to it. We've got a lot of chopping to do. My husband is already in the background. You can hear him chopping probably. He is my sous chef. And <laughs> stop making it louder. But anyway, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Please like this video and please share it. And, you know, let's get the word out. I'm trying to put out some good content, give you all some good videos, some good um, meal ideas and how to prep for the week. I'm busy during the week. I do a lot of working out. I work long hours and I have to have all my stuff ready for the week. I'm sure you do too. So let's get to it. Let's get into this meal prep. Got a lot to do today. Okay guys, we are ready to start our meal prep for today. On the menu, we are gonna do Mary Me Chicken with sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts. So I have some sweet potatoes here. We're gonna dice those up and roast them as we usually do. These over here actually came out of our garden, so I'm excited to use those. And then we did pick up three more at Walmart whenever we went grocery shopping yesterday. And then we have a bunch of Brussels sprouts. We picked up one bag at Sam's Club, but that's really not enough for six servings because we did make six servings of each meal. So we picked up two or three more of these bags um, at Walmart last night. And so I think that would be enough. Those are already cut in half, but I will definitely be cutting these in half and putting them on a pan. I'll show you how I do those. And then I have my three bell peppers for my breakfast that I'm gonna dice per usual. My tomato that will just be sliced for my sandwiches. My cantaloupe and pineapple for my fruit this week and my blueberries. And I think that is all of our produce. So we're gonna get ready to start chopping. My husband is going to take care of the cantaloupe and the pineapple and the peppers and he's gonna do the sweet potatoes. I will peel the sweet potatoes and then he will get those diced up. But we've got a lot to do today. We're going to get busy. So let's get to it. I'm going to start washing my fruits and vegetables. And so as usual, I use my salad spinner just because it's got this nice tray. I have some cold water in here and some white distilled vinegar. There it is. That's just the Publix brand. I had to pick up a new bottle. Um, so I'm going to wash my peppers and then I'm also going to wash, I don't think that the Brussels sprouts have to be washed. I will look at those and determine, but I will wash my tomato. I'm going to grab it and put it in here with the peppers and then I'll wash off the sweet potatoes as well. And then I will let my blueberries soak, but this is the best way to wash your produce and no, it does not taste like vinegar. You just rinse it really well. Okay. I'm going to start peeling the sweet potatoes. I have those set up here. Um, I've washed them and they've just been sitting here drying a little bit. I peel them and then Charlie, say hello. Hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. He is over here and he is going to get everything diced up for me. I think that's kind of dark. Let me turn around here. He is going to get everything prepped and then he will also get the chicken prepped for the Mary Me chicken and then all I have to do is put it all together. So I'm thankful for him and his help and we've got a lot to do today. So. I'm going to get these potatoes peeled because he'll be waiting on me. So I'm just going to start and peel a couple of these potatoes. And I'm starting with the ones that we got out of our garden because we didn't do really well with our garden this year. We got a few things. It was our very first year trying, but we definitely are going to have to put something around it, some kind of fence, because um, we had a bunch of tomatoes growing and something ate it all. And so... We were super disappointed, but we did get a few sweet potatoes. I don't know if we'll get any more or not. We will see, but we were excited to include these in our meal prep today. And so this is a little one. I just thought that I would peel him and see what he looks like. And this is the one that Charlie grew. And what I'll do is just get all of these peeled and then give them to Charlie and he is going to dice them up into the little cubes that we like to roast. That just makes it easier to eat and to portion out and everything. But there's one of our cute little garden potatoes. So I'm gonna get the rest of these peeled. Okay, as usual, I'm gonna go ahead and dice up my peppers. Charlie has chopped them up just into these little chunks so that they can go through the dicer easily and then I will show it to you at the end and how I store them. All right guys, perfectly diced peppers. That only took about a minute. 
And then to store it, I just use this rubber made container. I take three or four paper towels, put down in the bottom. That just helps absorb the moisture because these will be sitting in the refrigerator. I will just use it all throughout the week. And I'm going to just dump the peppers in there. And they will be ready for me. So, so simple. And it's worth the time. It's cheaper to buy your own and dice them than it is to buy the ones from the store. Plus, sometimes those, you know, they'll still have seeds and stuff in them. And I'm just really picky and want them perfectly cleaned and cut like I like them. So, pick up one of these little handy dicers from Walmart. $10. And that's it. I'll store them just like this in the refrigerator and it will help keep them fresh all week. Okay guys, I've got all of my fruit ready to go into the bowls, got my yogurt out, got all my containers, and with the magic of editing, we're just going to show you how quickly I can get this done in one, two, three. And just like that, there is my fruit and yogurt all prepped. I had to get my husband to do the snap for some reason. I couldn't snap my fingers. I tried, but whatever. It wasn't making any sound, so I was trying to do a cute little transition. We will see how that turns out, but fruit and yogurt is in the bowls and ready to go in the fridge, and now I'm ready to get my sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts in the oven. So to prep the sweet potatoes, I'm just going to use my extra virgin olive oil spray. I'm going to spray it generously and then I'm going to put some pink Himalayan sea salt on there which I'm almost out of this. I'm probably going to have to get some more of that at the store next week and then ground cinnamon and what I'm going to do is do that two or three times until I feel like it is coated very well. So I'm going to go in and I'm just doing this in place of using real olive oil and then I'm going to take my cinnamon wrong side and I'm just going to sprinkle it on there again generously. This is just going to give the sweet potatoes that good sweet taste and then along with the pink Himalayan sea salt then you have your sweet and savory together. So now I'm going to take my salt, take that lid off because as you can see once you kind of stir them around they don't have the cinnamon and stuff on them. Okay, and there you go. I think that is perfect. I'm going to set this to the side and grab the Brussels sprouts and we're going to get those together and then we're going to bake these in the oven at the same time. Okay, so I have my Brussels sprouts here. I've got them in this huge bowl and then what I'm going to use for that is going to be some avocado oil spray and salt and pepper, of course. Generously, we'll salt and pepper it. I'm going to put a little ground cumin in there just to spice it up a little bit and a bit of garlic uh, powder and we're just going to mix it up. I might even use my hands and mix it, I don't know, probably a spoon, and then we'll spread it out on a baking sheet and it will be ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do, is just kinda spray this spray in there. And I'll probably do this just like the potatoes and kinda go through it a couple of times just to get it mixed. This is a lot of Brussels sprouts. My husband actually finished uh, chopping all of these. I was going to do it, but I was trying to do so many other things. I was just like, you're going to have to chop these too. So thank goodness for him. Always there to help me out with his chopping skills. And little known fact, he actually used to be a butcher. So that's one reason that he is so good at it. And I'll never let him forget it. He's always going to be here to help me. Right, Charlie? Sure. <laughs> He's like, whatever. I'm tired of chopping. We're not going to do too much cumin, just a little bit, and then a generous amount of the garlic powder. I'll grab a big spoon here and give this a stir. We're going to go in again with some more olive oil spray and some more pepper and salt. And I don't think I'm going to add any more cumin. I'm just going to add some more of the garlic powder. That's what really gives it the good flavor is the garlic. So if you don't like Brussels sprouts, season them up good. Let me grab my baking sheet and we will have these ready to pop in the oven. All right, guys, got my sweet potatoes ready. 
I've got my Brussels sprouts ready. Oven is preheated to 400 degrees. I'm going to put them in for 30 minutes and then I'm going to take both of them out and give them a good stir, toss them around a bit, and then I'm going to put them back in probably for another 30 minutes. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to start on the Mary Me Chicken finally. Um, for this, we are using, I think, four chicken breasts that are kind of sliced into some smaller pieces, and then I will just measure it out and divide it evenly between our six containers since chicken is zero points on the blue plan. Um, but this is kind of the recipe that I follow that I found online, but I have modified it a little bit. Instead of the heavy cream, I'm going to use half and half. That cuts the points down a lot. And I think everything else I have the same except for the fresh basil. I do not have any fresh basil. I forgot that that was even on the recipe, but it's fine. This is a really good, rich meal. And here's my half and half. I'm going to salt and pepper my chicken, of course. It calls for some minced garlic. I'm going to use this in the jar. Some sun-dried tomatoes. There's my chicken back there ready to go and then my thyme leaves and the red pepper flakes. So I'm gonna get all of this set up and get to cooking. I hope that you can see, okay, I've got my chicken here. I've kind of put some salt and pepper on one side and it says to put your olive oil in, which of course I am not using real olive oil. I'm just gonna use the olive oil spray and we're gonna turn the stove on. That is an important step. I always forget. And we're basically going to lay the chicken breasts down in here until they're kind of brown. Um, it says for 45 minutes. If you've watched me before, you know I like my food very well done. So I might leave it in here a little bit longer, but it is going to go in the oven. Um, and I might actually have to do this chicken in two batches. It's quite a bit. We'll see if I can squish them all in here. Of course, once I put it in the oven, I would just put it in all together, even if they're overlaying, but, okay, I'm going to have to cook these in two separate batches. I'll, I'll actually take one of those out, just to have a little extra room. So I know that the sound of the chicken cooking is pretty loud, but what you want to do is just stir the chicken on both sides for about four or five minutes until it's done and then I'm going to put it in a plate and then I have the next batch of chicken ready to go and then I'll come back once I'm ready to make the sauce with the sun-dried tomatoes, the um, half and half and garlic and stuff like that and then you basically put the chicken back into the mixture and put it in the oven. I will link the original recipe down below as well. Okay, so I've got all the chicken breast seared and cooked enough for now. They will finish baking in the oven. Make sure that you use a skillet that you can transfer into the oven because what we're going to do now is add the garlic and then stir in the thyme, the red pepper flakes, chicken broth, which is one thing I forgot to mention that you also need three-fourths of a cup of chicken broth, and the um, heavy cream, or in my case I'm using half and half to cut down on the points. So I've just kind of pushed this off the heat so that it would cool down a little bit. I'm going to put it back on here and grab a spoon and add my garlic. It says two cloves, so I'm just going to kind of do two big teaspoons of this minced garlic. I just prefer to use this as opposed to having to um, do it myself. And garlic burns easily, so you definitely don't want to leave it in here too long by itself. I'm just going to stir it around. And go ahead and get my other items added. So it says the thyme, the red pepper flakes, which I've already measured those out in this bowl, and then the chicken broth. Three fourths a cup of that. I'm going to get that in there. And the heavy cream. So I have half a cup of heavy cream as well. And this is what's going to make the chicken really tastes delicious. We're going to stir this up for about a minute and let it cook. And I'm kind of using this to scrape, you know, some of that stuff that's kind of stuck on the bottom of the skillet off because those little bits also will give it more flavor. So I don't know how well you can see that. Let me see if I can pull you a little bit closer here so you can see what that sauce looks like. And if you use the heavy cream, it really is a little bit thicker, but I think that the half and half is going to be fine. 
and the last time that I made it and I used the heavy cream um, and I used a half a cup of Parmesan cheese it made a serving five points so the way that I'm doing it today it's coming out to two points on the blue plan because I'm only going to use a fourth of a cup of the Parmesan cheese and then I used half and half instead of heavy cream so we'll see how it turns out and then I have my half a cup of um, sun-dried tomatoes which these do come in oil but I did drain the oil off of those these are the julienne cut ones so I didn't have to chop them that makes it easy and um, so basically this is just going to sit here for a minute and then we're just going to stir it up no I take that back five minutes <laughs> and it says stirring often and then we're going to stir in the sun-dried tomatoes and the parmesan cheese then we're going to put this chicken back in the skillet and kind of spoon the sauce over the chicken until it's coated. And then this is going into the oven at 375 degrees for about 15 to 18 minutes, it says. Which I may do 20 minutes. You know, I want my chicken done. Plus, since I'm using a thinner broth, I mean a thinner cream, it's, it's you know, might take a little bit longer for it to thicken up a little bit. But once you put the sun-dried tomatoes in here, this does smell heavenly. So I'm going to let that set, clean up some of my stuff real quick, and then we will put in the sun-dried tomatoes and the chicken. Okay, so now I am ready to start in the sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm going to put those in. And the Parmesan cheese. Again, this is just a fourth of a cup of regular Parmesan cheese. 20 grams, exactly, is what I measured out. And that is another tip that I would have for everybody is to weigh your food instead of measuring out half a cup. I mean, with the chicken broth and the cream, I measured it out in just a regular measuring cup. But for stuff like cheese and... You know, things like that, it's just easier to measure it out in grams. And it has the grams on the back of the package for the serving, so that's an easy way to calculate it. Mmm, I wish y'all could smell this. Those sun-dried tomatoes are so good. And that's why this is called Marry Me Chicken. You're supposed to, you know, make this for your man, and then he's going to want to marry you because this chicken is so delicious. We've only had this one other time, but it is really good in all seriousness. And now I'm going to add my chicken back in. I'm going to add my chicken back in. And this may be overlapping a little bit, but it's okay because it is going to go right into the oven. So I told my husband to cut the chicken in half. Well, I meant to take it and slice it to where each half was thinner, but he cut it in half to where it was thick halves. That's why there's so many little pieces, because then I looked at him, I was like, you cut it the wrong direction. He said, you said cut it in half, and I meant, you know, to make it thin. So, anyway, it says then to kind of spoon the sauce over it, which is a little bit difficult because I have so much chicken in here, but we're just going to kind of stir it around, flip the chicken over, just to try to make sure that it's good and coated in the sauce. So, I'm going to finish getting this coated and get this in the oven. I'm going to have to move you because you are right in front of the oven so that I can transfer it over there. So, I'll finish it up and then show you what it looks like once I get it out. So, just to update y'all, we have pulled the Brussels sprouts out of the oven. They look delicious. They actually smell delicious to me. I know some people don't like the way they smell, but I love them. And then we've also pulled the sweet potatoes out, and now the Mary Me Chicken is in the oven. So this is probably going to come out to be about a seven-point meal for me. The Mary Me Chicken is two points, and I'll probably have about five points worth of sweet potatoes. Um, and then the Brussels sprouts will be zero points. So definitely a good hearty meal that's going to be worth the seven points right. for our other meal we are going to do spaghetti which for me that really just means going ahead and pre prepping my ground turkey with my marinara that i'm going to use um i don't eat noodles i use zucchini so i have six zucchini here so basically what i will have for each night i will spiralize 
two zucchinis for each night and I will just do those fresh on the nights that I'm going to eat them because you can just heat it up in the microwave but it only takes about three minutes and then you have perfect zoodles which I will show you that because this is what we're going to eat for dinner tonight but I went ahead and washed my zucchini and really it's just going to sit here and dry and I'm going to put it away until we get ready for dinner tonight and then I will come back and show you how I prep that and make my spaghetti um, and then for the marinara sauce we're going to split this my husband's going to do ground beef for his sauce and this jar has exactly six servings now I've gotten a couple of questions on how you weigh and measure things out in grams which if this will focus I don't know if it will probably not let me see here if I can get it to focus a little better I don't know if you can see that or not but basically on the serving size it says it is half a cup or in parentheses it says 120 grams so that means that for three servings I would need 360 grams <laughs> it's hard for me to do math in my head and then um, my husband would get 360 grams which this whole jar should be 660 grams it doesn't have the total on there um, well it says 737 grams I guess that's right anyway I'm not trying to do math today except for I'm going to go ahead and weigh out 360 grams of this which should be half of the container for myself so that I know exactly how much I'm getting so I have my bowl here I'm going to turn this on it is set on grams for zero and I'm going to go ahead and just measure it out until it's about 360 and again this is going to be three servings for me uh oh my Mary Me chicken is about done look at there 359 that is close enough so I know that is going to be my serving and then the rest in the jar will go into my husband's ground beef I'm going to stop real quick and get this chicken out of the oven. Here is the Mary Me chicken. I just pulled it out of the oven. It smells delicious. It looks delicious. I'm just going to let it sit here and rest. I'm going to put the lid on it and just let it wait because I'm not ready yet to plate this up. I'm going to work on my um, spaghetti sauces and then we're going to plate everything up at the end. I have my turkey browning. I have my husband's pasta going. Um, I'm only going to boil it for about seven minutes so that it's al dente. And then once the turkey is done, I'm just going to add in the sauce. I may give it a little taste and see if it needs anything else. If it does, I'll just add in a little cumin and maybe a little chili powder because I just personally think that those taste great in everything. So this is looking good so far. All I've done is just season this with salt and pepper right now. And I'm not sure how many points this is. Let me just scan it and see how many points the actual um, spaghetti sauce is per serving. Okay, so it is three points per serving. So that will make my actual zoodles and my sauce and turkey and everything three points and then I will have three points worth of my two ingredient garlic rolls which we still have to make um, so that'll be a six point meal and it's very filling so both of the meals that I'm making for this week one is six points one is going to be seven points for the meal and they're both going to be super filling because of just the combination of the zero point foods and you know how I tried to cut some corners and not use heavy whipping cream and half and half and the Mary Me chicken. So there's ways that you can take any recipe and kind of make it your own. And if you want to use the full stuff, use the full stuff and use the points. Uh, for myself, I like to eat, you know, throughout the day. I have to have breakfast. I have to have lunch. I have to have snacks typically. Sunday's probably the only day that I don't eat snacks, and that's only because I'm too busy cooking. So anyway, um, yeah, so three points for the pasta sauce per serving and then it'll be three points for the rolls definitely worth it okay so my ground turkey marinara is done i'm actually going to weigh it in this bowl to see how many grams it is and then that way i know how to divide it out by three and have three perfect portions so i'm going to set you down and put this in the bowl and then we'll see what we have okay so here we go i have it weighed out it is 687 grams 
So I will have to divide that by three and see how much that's going to be, but it'll be about 220 something grams per serving. But that's how I like to measure out my food. If you remembered earlier, I measured out my turkey marinara and it was 687 grams, which comes out to be about 229 grams per serving. So that's what I am going to weigh out. Actually, let me swap this around and move my scale over here. So I'm probably going to do 225 because sometimes I've noticed that, you know, the last one won't have as much. So we will see. That's a little too much, 219. There we go, 226. So that one's good, and then we will move on to the next one. And then I'm gonna just do the same thing for my husband's ground beef, even though he doesn't really care if he's eating the exact um, portions or not, but just so that it's evened out for him throughout the week. Now that one came to 227, and then let's see what we get in the last one because it said 229 was what it was divided by three. You see this one is still a little bit short even though I didn't do as much as what it said, but we've ended up with 215. So I'm just gonna take just like a little drop from that one that made 219, so that took four grams out of that one. And there we go. That took a couple of grams out of that one so it is equal enough again I really don't use my weeklies and I never use my fit points ever I don't even know what those are I never look at those so if it's not perfect it's okay um, so this will be what I say three points for the marinara sauce zero for the turkey and then it'll be zero for my zoodles that I'm gonna make and then the next step is my two ingredient dough, which is really three ingredients because I add garlic powder to it. But anyway, let me get this cleaned up and I'm going to plate up my husband's and then we'll show you what we got and then we'll be ready to plate up the Mary Me chicken. It's just kind of been sitting and waiting and then I will do my baking. So I'm getting ready to plate up the Mary Me chicken. I am not going to weigh this out. I'm pretty much just going to eyeball it and try to divide it as equally as I can. But um, this looks and smells delicious. I think we'll each get probably two to three pieces of chicken and then we'll just divide out the sauce. Like I said, these were just some chicken breasts that I wanted him to cut thinly, but he cut them uh, the wrong way. So then we turn around and cut them thin. So that's why they're in smaller pieces. And it's just so much cheaper to buy like those large packs of chicken breasts at Walmart or Kroger. That's where I usually get them. Um, I mean, for $10 for a huge pack of chicken, and then we usually always have two or three pieces left over after we cook a meal like this, and we will freeze those, and then the next time I make taco soup or something like that, that's the best part of the Mary Me chicken. It's definitely the sauce. Sorry if that spoon's loud, but I'm gonna try to scrape that and get the sauce over the chicken. All right, there we go, that's the chicken. I'll plate it up and then we're gonna do sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts. And I have a ton of Brussels sprouts. I think it's way too much, but we'll see what we end up with. I'm gonna weigh out the sweet potatoes. So I'm gonna get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, for the sweet potatoes, for mine, I'm gonna do five ounces in each one so that I know how much it is. And then what I like to do is I will just cover ours, like I'll just do red and orange for my lids and green and blue for Charlie's because then he'll know which ones are his because um, he'll have more sweet potatoes than I do. He's probably going to end up with about six ounces because that's about how much we have. So anyway, I'm going to do five ounce portions in mine and then he will just get divided out equally what the rest is because again, he is not counting his calories or macros or he's not on WW or anything. But I'm just going to put this on here. And that is um, zero. And then I'm just going to measure five ounces. And honestly, I wouldn't be as picky about measuring it. 
if the chicken was zero points, that's 4.75, 4 4.95, so that's actually perfect. So that little container, that slot there, fills that up perfectly with the five ounces. So I'm going to get all of these plated up and go ahead and divide out the Brussels sprouts because those, again, are going to be zero points, so it doesn't matter how much goes in each one. I'm really going to try to cram those in because, oops, I think that we have quite a bit of um, Brussels sprouts. So I'll be back once I get all this plated up. Okay, here is the Mary Me chicken with the Brussels sprouts and the roasted sweet potatoes. It looks delicious. Again, this is a seven point meal. Mine are the three up in the front because I measured out the five ounces of sweet potatoes, which is five points. And then the Mary Me chicken came to two points per serving. So this looks great. And I can't wait to try it. We probably won't eat this until Monday night. I think tonight we will have our spaghetti. Okay guys, I'm getting ready to make my chocolate peanut butter protein cookies, which I know I put these in almost every one of my um, meal prep videos, but I can't get enough of them. They are so low in points and so good to, at least to me they are. So what you need for this is some peanut butter protein powder. I like to use that Centrax Matrix peanut butter cookie. You can order that on Amazon. And then I use the Select Protein by PE Science. And this is in the chocolate cupcake. And you can also order that on Amazon as well. Or you can pick those up at like the vitamin store or if you have a nutrition factory or you know those types of stores in your hometown. You also need some egg whites. I use about 100 grams or so, just depending on the consistency. Those are zero points in the blue plan, so it really doesn't matter. Um, you will need some baking powder. I use a big heaping tablespoon in this just to help give them a little bit of um, fluffiness. You will need some of the Hershey's Special Dark Cocoa, 100% pure pumpkin. Um, this is half the can left from whenever I made my batch earlier in the week, so I'm going to use the rest of it today. And then you need some of the sugar-free Jello. This is the chocolate fudge. If you just get regular chocolate, that's fine. I honestly don't even know if this makes that much of a difference in the recipe. It only calls for five grams, so um, you could probably even do without it. And then 14 grams or one serving of the Lily's dark chocolate, no sugar added baking chips. So I'm gonna get all of this mixed up. What I like to do is mix all my dry goods and then I will add in the wet and get it all mixed up and then I will add the chocolate chips in last. Okay guys, I have one scoop of the chocolate protein powder and one scoop of the peanut butter protein powder in here. And now I am going to go ahead and measure out five grams of the Hershey's dark cocoa. I'm just gonna put it on grams. There we go. And then I'm gonna measure out five grams of the Jello sugar-free pudding as well. And then I just fold these up and put them back in the box because it takes a little while to go through a whole box when I just use five grams at a time and just take the end of it. And then I'm gonna use a large tablespoon of baking powder. And again, I like to use a big heaping tablespoon of that. So that is all of the dry goods. And I'm gonna get this mixed up and then we'll add in the wet ingredients which is just the pumpkin and the egg whites. Go ahead and put in the pumpkin. There we go, 215 grams, so that was perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add in 100 grams of egg whites. To me, that looks like just about the perfect consistency. I'm gonna put all this stuff away and get my baking sheet and get this divided out into 12 cookies. Cookies are ready to go in. I'm gonna put them in for nine minutes, 350 degrees, and then if they need like an additional minute or so, I will put them back in for another minute, but usually nine minutes, 10 minutes max. Okay guys, now I'm gonna work on the two ingredient rolls. Um, I have one and a half cups of self-rising flour here. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of garlic powder and mix that well, and then I have a cup of the non-fat Greek yogurt that I will put in there, um, which the two ingredient dough is really just the flour and the yogurt. But then you can always add whatever seasonings that you want to season it up. And we like garlic rose. So there is one tablespoon 
too and you do like to add this before you add in the yogurt just to mix the dry ingredients just so that the garlic is pretty evenly dispersed in there with the flour. So that's mixed pretty well and then I'm going to go ahead and put in my cup of yogurt. Some people do a one to one ratio. I like to do a little less yogurt than flour which this was kind of a heaping cup but I was just trying to finish off my container of yogurt that I had. So then I'm just going to stir this until it's kind of crumbly and then I'll just use my hands to mix it into a nice dough ball. I know some people don't like to get their hands all sticky and messy but if you work with dough you know that's pretty much what you have to do. And I didn't keep out any extra flour so I hope that I have enough. Sometimes I'll reserve a little bit of flour in my measuring cup, but I did not this time, so we're just gonna try to make it work because I keep my flour in the freezer. I've already put it back up. I guess y'all hear my stove going off. I pretty much got this into a dough ball. That means my cookies are done. I'm gonna stop and wash my hands and get those out. Here are the cookies. I just pulled them out of the oven. They look perfect. They will sit here and they will kind of flatten up a little bit before I put them in the container. I just store these in the refrigerator and then warm them up for 30 seconds. I usually have two or three of them for my dessert at night. It really just depends on how hungry I am. Two of them are one point and three are two points. I don't know how much four are. I don't even think I could eat four cookies, but um, again, I will leave the recipe and the points and the details and everything down below in the description box. Okay, I got the cookies out of the oven, and now I am ready to roll out my little garlic rolls, but first I need to see how many grams I want for each one of them. So I've measured this, this is 468 grams, and I want 18 rolls, so that comes to 26. So I'm gonna to try to do 26 grams per roll. What I'm gonna do is just leave it on here, I'm gonna tear it out to where it is zero, and then I'm gonna pull it off until it is negative 26 grams. And I'm just gonna do that over and over again until I get all 18 of them. And then my little trick is to take the butter spray, sorry, you can't see my face, but I thought you'd wanna see the food instead, is to take the butter spray and you spray it on your hands. And then that helps with the stickiness of the dough. So I had that teared out to zero. So there, that's 22, 25, 26 grams and so that is how big each one's going to be they're small but you know it's nice to get three of them for three points at dinner that's why I mean I could make them into 12 and then they would just probably be worth a little bit more but I like to make the little small ones so I'm gonna finish doing all of these and I'll show you kind of how I finish them up spraying them with the butter and putting the garlic salt on there as well I have all 18 rolls done for you. Here you can see them all. And then I'm going to take the butter spray, which this is just the Walmart brand, and I'm going to do a good little coating over the top of them. And then I'm going to take my garlic salt, and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on each one. It just gives them that little saltiness on top. Kind of reminds me of a garlic roll like you would get at a restaurant. And these are going to go in the oven at 350. I think I usually do 12 minutes and then I will check them and move them up to the top rack and put them on broil for, you know, a minute or two until they're golden brown. So we're going to go in for 12 minutes at 350. Okay, I just pulled the last thing out of the oven, which was the garlic rolls. They look perfect. They're perfectly brown. I bake them for 12 minutes. I put them on the middle rack because my oven gets really hot. So 12 minutes, 350 degrees, and then I moved them to the top rack and put them on broil, and I just watched them until they got golden brown, which I think these turned out perfect. They're actually still really hot, but they are one point per roll, and I will have the recipe listed down below for you. All right, just one more um, presentation here of the cookies before I put them in the Rubbermaid container to put them in the refrigerator. I think that they turned out perfect. These are actually pretty big cookies too. So these are almost cooled. I will let them set and cool a little bit longer before I put them in the container, but I think that they turned out perfect. We made the Mary Me chicken with the roasted sweet potatoes and the roasted um, Brussels sprouts. And then I also did the spaghetti sauce and my husband's spaghetti. We've got the garlic rolls in the oven now and I have already baked my cookies. So 
I think this was a pretty successful meal prep and I hope that you get some good ideas and try some of these recipes. I will link the original recipe for the Mary Mead Chicken down below and also I will type out the rest of the recipes that I did that are my recipes. But I love y'all guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Please click that subscribe button. Please like, please share, please help me grow my channel. I'm going to keep putting out content. Um, I'm probably planning on three videos per week. That's kind of my schedule. I do like a grocery haul, clothing haul. I'm going to do a what I eat in a day video and a meal prep. And then sometimes there may be another video just kind of thrown in there. I'm going to try to learn to vlog a little bit since I got my new camera. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me and I will see y'all next time.